everybody, I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. That's right. There's a love and there's a light that's absolutely in you. You might not feel connected to it. And if you don't, that's not your fault. That means that love was never mirrored back to you in its purest form, like it should have been. Um, so it's not your fault. Um, and our journey forward is about learning how to connect that love and the light that is within us. So from me to you, I wish to bow to the love and light that I know exists within you as you learn to appreciate and honor the love and the light that is absolutely within you on your journey. So Mother's Day is actually Sunday. Hopefully this video will air May 12th, 2017, um, 2017. And um, our Mother's Day is this Sunday, right? So um, interestingly enough, you guys can contact me on Twitter, Facebook, Inside Timer, as well as um, Instagram. And upcoming to Mother's Day, very interestingly, at least, uh, very interestingly, at least once on each social media site, I have been asked to do a video like this about Mother's Day. Um, I pulled this. This was a this was an email that someone actually sent me. Um, and I'd like to share it with you and it has to do with a daughter who is struggling with how she should feel around Mother's Day um, in light of abuse that she experienced as a child. So I'd like to share this with you. Dear Lisa, thank God for your channel. You've explained so much to me about why I feel the way I do. I hope you can help me and possibly do a video on this topic. My mom is a recovering alcoholic. My biological dad died when I was three. Within a few months of his death, my mom married our neighbor. He too was an alcoholic. From the time I was about five and until I was about 11, my stepdad molested me. I told my mom about it, about him touching me when I was about eight. She called me a liar. I was crushed. This of course gave my stepdad permission to sexually abuse me. My mom divorced him about six years ago. I am 46 now and have not and have not, um, sorry, I lost my place. I am 46 now and have not gotten past her ignoring the abuse. With Mother's Day around the corner, I am struggling because I really don't give a crap about Mother's Day. But my older siblings keep pressuring me to give up on the no contact between us. Mind you, my siblings never suffered sexual abuse and they too all thought that I was lying. Yes, my mom is sober today. And yes, she is sorry but I'm not ready to send her any flowers on Mother's Day or to get together and celebrate her motherhood. Am I wrong? Any advice would be so appreciated. Appreciating. Please don't mention my name. Um, do you know I'm not going to mention your name? Totally respect you. Um, but you asked for video and so here it is. I don't think that you're wrong. And I don't think that just because somebody, um, a mom who is now in recovery for alcoholism who had probably spent I mean she's only sober six years and I think you're 46 so for 40 years you were dealing with a mom who couldn't see you um, not your fault you know um, don't know mom's particulars whatever this is about you right so I don't think that you're wrong for how you feel how you feel is how you feel and if you're not ready to go to have contact with her yet that's your prerogative and that's your right this is your healing journey it's great that mom is sober and it's great that she's sorry but that doesn't negate the abuse and the trauma that you have experienced throughout your lifetime so the sexual abuse is one part of your trauma but then there is also other facets to this trauma as well you know children are supposed to feel safe and protected by their mothers now it's one thing if your mom didn't know that their sexual abuse was going on it's another thing that which is bad enough right so you're in a home you're being sexually molested God forbid but in this case you were and you're you don't feel protected right and that's the goal of parents parents one of the goals that parents have is to make their children feel safe and protected you didn't have that you were violated right by the stepdad and so now where you should have felt protected by your mom, you weren't, okay? But like I said, it's one thing psychologically for the child who knows she didn't say anything to her mom. It's another level when a child says to her mom or says to her siblings, hey, hey, look, you know, our stepfather is abusing me or hey, mom, your husband is abusing me and she calls you a liar. That is an entirely another layer, in my opinion, of trauma. 
here I am, a, a child, I've opened myself up, I'm telling, you know, the person that is supposed to protect me, you know, I'm hoping that she will, I'm assuming that she will, she's my mom, she's going to want to know if someone's hurting me, and she says, you're a liar. Basically telling, basically invalidating your trauma, your experiences, and talk about being abandoned. I get really heated when I think about stuff like this because in my heart of hearts, I know that every child is powerless and every child is a victim to whatever is happening in their environment. Children, you know, we can talk all we want and say that children have rights. Really, 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 really? What rights does a five-year-old have when she's being molested? What rights? What rights does a child really have? They should have rights and we should, the whole entire, our whole mindset as a society should be worried about children, what they think, what they feel, what they need. This is, this is the way we have to start thinking as a society. But is that really the way we think as a society? I don't think so, not yet. And if you do, that's awesome and that's, this is how we change. We worry as parents of our children, as aunts and uncles and grandparents of the innocent children that we have the blessed, you know, the blessing to be able to be experienced and have them be a part of our experience. We care about them. The neighbors of children that we see on the street, we care about them. We, we look to see them and mirror back a sense of validation. That's how we end up changing the world. But dear one, you have a lifetime of being abused. You don't mention any therapy that you've been in. You know, I'm glad you found my channel, but please make sure that you stay on the healing path. You have got to be able to validate your experiences from the stepdad, you know, as well as validate the experience of being completely abandoned and, and talk about the moment of powerlessness when you, when you tell your mom something so sinister and you, you share this with her and she abandons you and she rejects you. Are you kidding me? No, dear one. If you've gone no contact with your mom, I totally get it. It's like your higher self is as this is the only way that you've been able to protect the divine inner child from your mom over the years is I've got to shut down. I've got to go no contact and I've got to protect me, you know, and when you've got siblings involved and you know, they're ganging up on you telling you, Oh, get over yourself. Oh, you're being too sensitive. You know, you, they're basically abandoning and rejecting you too, not respecting your place, not respecting how you feel. So I don't personally, if you're at, you ask me my opinion, no, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. And I get it, right? So here it is Mother's Day and so many of us have come to a place where we acknowledge that our mothers have not been there for us or our fathers have not been there for us. And that's hard enough as it is to acknowledge consciously, oh my God, you know, it wasn't this wonderful life experience. It, I have been shielding my parents. I have not been confronting this reality that I have been abandoned or I have been rejected or I have been abused. I haven't really been really, really um, acknowledging that my mother was supposed to protect me and she didn't. Or my father was supposed to protect me from my mother and he didn't. Oh my God, you know? So that's hard enough as it is like confronting that reality. And then society hits us with Mother's Day and society hits us with Father's Day. And everywhere we look, I mean, I just, you know, I just drove down, I went food shopping earlier today and everything is Mother's Day because everything is marketing. You know, the flower shops, the card shops, you know, everywhere you go, people are trying to monopolize on the fact that it's Mother's Day. They want your money. They want you to buy their flowers. They want you to buy the cards. They want you to order, order plants for your mom, whatever. You know the deal, right? So here you are, a wounded adult child processing all this hurt. And it's the time of the season that mothers are being exalted. It's on television. You're, if you have friends who have great relationships with their moms, they're talking about taking their mom out for a Sunday dinner. They're talking about going to their mother's house or whatever. Having a, Wouldn't that be nice if you could have a conversation in a spa day with your mom? Wouldn't that be nice if you can go and like, mom, I love you. I mean, I, I don't know about you. I'm sure, I'm sure you've struggled with trying. How many of you have tried to send your mom a Mother's Day card? I mean, seriously, have you had any luck? I mean, it is, if you're the daughter of a narcissist or the son 
of a narcissistic mom, like trying to find a Mother's Day card that's appropriate for this situation if you're not no contact and you're still in denial or you haven't confronted it or whatever, you know, you're just at a place where you acknowledge who and what she is and like whatever. So you send her a card every year because you think you should have to. But that, it's crazy making because these cards are gushing with sentiments. And I know myself, I have years ago, I remember looking at Mother's Day cards and crying like, I wish I could feel this for my mother. But I, you know, but I didn't, I couldn't. And it took me a long time to like realize that that's okay. That it's not my fault that this disconnection was valid. It's not my fault that dis this disconnection was real. It's not my fault that my mother had issues and she brought them into the life experience when, and when I got incarnated through her, they weren't resolved. That's not my fault that I can't feel this way towards my mom. It's not my fault, right? And so there are so many things going on with your email, dear one. Um, and to answer your question, no, I don't think you're wrong. I think that if you need to go no contact for as long as you need to go no contact. As far as like, and I've had this situation with, with more than one client where, you know, a recovering alcoholic, whether it's an uncle who offended you or a dad or a mom that's offended you or a sibling that's offended you and they, you know, they, they get clean and they get sober, they go into 30 day treatment or whatever and they go into treatment and now they're in AA and they come and they want to make amends with you, right? And I've had situations where clients have, set, have told me that I don't feel like my uncle's apology was heartfelt. or I don't feel like my mom's apology was heartfelt. She's like, I'm sorry. You know what happened in the past? Like, you know, I was an alcoholic. I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, yeah, I know I should have been a better mother. But you turned out all right, right? So it's, you have to pay attention to the energy of the apology and an energy I mean a, a, an apology that is just about words and it's all like up here and it's not in the heart space and you can't feel that apology and you don't see empathy in your mother's eyes or your father's eyes or your siblings eyes or your husband's eyes or your wife's eyes whoever the person is that's offended you in any way in this case we're talking about this woman who hasn't has a now alcohol, recovering alcoholic of a mom who knew there was sexual abuse going on in the house with the stepdad and did nothing about it and actually told the daughter that she was crazy. Um, there's a lot to be sorry for. And if I could speak to that mom from, for, I would, if I could speak to that mom, I would say, mom, a lot went on when you were drinking. A lot went on when your, your husband was not in your bed and he was in your kid's bed. A lot was going on. And I understand that you have, you had an issue and I understand that you probably came from really, really horrible life experiences yourself, but you have to understand that it is a mother's job to protect her child. And your daughter expected you and needed you to be there for her. Now I get that alcoholism was a part of the issue and I'm sorry that that was a part of your dynamic. I really, really am. But to really heal and move forward and to crack this code that is dysfunctional in your family line, you're going to have to take responsibility for you not protecting your child, even if alcoholism was a part of your life. You're going to have to face it and you're going to have to own it and you're going to have to stand there and take it. So that means if your daughter wants to get angry at you, if your daughter wants to yell at you, if your daughter wants to cry and fall apart in front of you, you got to take it. If you really are sorry about what happened to your child, she'll feel it. If you really are sorry, you will be humbled by your daughter's experience. So when we ask for, when we ask for forgiveness, mom, if you're asking your daughter for forgiveness, make sure that you're, you have been able to have empathy for her experience. Make sure that before you offer an apology, you have sat in the hot seat. You have imagined what your daughter's life experience was like being your daughter under that roof, married to the man that you married. I know it's difficult to do that. And, 
and trust me when I tell you, I know as a mom that I've got to come, I've had to come full circle with, with things that I did wrong as a mom. And I know it's not easy, but you can do it. And if your heart is in the right place and you want to heal your daughter and next Mother's Day, if you want there to be a better Mother's Day, then you will heed what I'm, listen to what I'm saying. In order for your daughter to forgive you and for you to heal what's wrong, she's got to know that you know what it was like for her to be your child. And you know what it must have been like, or you can at least try to imagine what, how tragic it was for this innocent eight-year-old baby to come to you and say, Daddy's touching me. Daddy's hurting me. That alone is horrific. And it's going to be hard for a mom like you to understand and to sit in the hot seat and to know that your kid was being abused this way and you were in the same house. But in order for your daughter to forgive you, she's going to have to know that you know what that experience was like for her. Or you can at least imagine it. You're going to have to feel your daughter's pain and she's going to have to know that you know what that felt like and that you're willing to go there. Not only will you have to be willing to imagine what it was like to be this child, you're going to have to be able to handle however she feels as a result of what happened to her. So that means if she doesn't want to talk to you, you've got to be able to say, I understand. I understand. I failed you and I'm sorry. No excuses. No excuses. We don't say, I failed you, but I was an alcoholic. We say, I know that you needed me to be there for you and I failed you and I am sorry from my toes. I am sorry. We don't make excuses. When we're asking for forgiveness, we acknowledge what we've done and we don't make excuses for what we've done. We allow the person that we've wounded to feel validated. We witness how our actions or our inactions have, effect, have affected that person. So mom, hopefully, by some miracle, you'll be able to see this video or maybe this video will resonate with someone out there who is who needs to ask their child for forgiveness. It's about imagining what it was like for your child. And then being able to stand there and take it. So however she feels, you made me feel this. I hated you and he did this to me. You got to stand there and take it. And I needed you. You got to stand there and take it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you're crippled by it, that's okay. That's okay. Your child needs to know that you're willing to be crippled by it and stand there. And then, Mom, you've got to be able to, out of love for this child and healing this vibration in your family, you've got to be able to ask for forgiveness. And then whatever that your daughter or your son has to say to you, you've got to be willing to give them their space. However you want to deal with this, however you want to, however you want to handle this moving forward, I get it. And I'm going to be here for you with open arms. Whatever you need to say to me, I'm going to take it. And hopefully we'll be able to move past this. Now, moms, if you can do that, awesome. That'd be freaking great. You end up healing your generations of BS in your family. You end up, you know, helping, helping heal shame in, in your own child. It's beautiful. This is for the moms or anyone out there who is willing to take this on and ask for forgiveness in this situation. There's always, not, there's always a chance that your child will not forgive you as long as you have asked for forgiveness and you've come from an authentic place, not a self-righteous place, not a, yeah, I know I wounded you, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, I know I wounded you, but I was on meth. Yeah, I was a long time ago, but you know what? I came from a screwed up childhood. No excuses, no excuses. So I'm talking to the moms who and the dads out there who are willing to ask for authentic Forgiveness, if your child chooses not to forgive you, that's okay. You've got to learn to accept that. You've got to take what you've learned from this experience and just do better now that you know better. And always send your child love and light anyway. Love and light anyway. To the children out there, Mother's Day is coming. Whether you're the son or a daughter of a narcissistic mom, you know, don't take the bait. Don't, you know what, if it's Mother's Day and advertisers and marketers and flower shops and candy shops and card shops are trying to make money, don't take the bait. It's okay. Just don't, just don't take the bait. Um, you don't have to feel like, well, 
In other words, they'll try to induce guilt on you. You don't have to take the bait. And you know what? That Mother's Day is for someone else. Good for other kids who have good relationships with their mothers. Namaste. That's awesome. And love and light. Good for them. Just turn the cheek and walk away. Try not to be influenced by this marketing end of Mother's Day. And if you choose not to forgive your mom, or if you if you know that they're not asking you for authentic forgiveness, it's totally fine to be to continue no contact. Absolutely up to you. I hope that this email, I mean, I'm sorry, I hope that this video to this email um, has proven beneficial to some of you or to all of you. That would be freaking awesome. Um, to the daughters and the sons out there who are in this dynamic and waking up to the reality that their moms were not the best moms and their moms have wounded them and their moms are very callous with their emotions and their moms can't ask for authentic forgiveness and their moms are always making excuses for why they abuse them. I get it. Perhaps no contact is the best thing for you right now. Protect yourself. You know, just because someone gave birth to you doesn't mean that they could see you. And, you know, um, we have to start accepting that reality. Not every mom deserves a Mother's Day card this Mother's Day. And that's okay. And if that's your reality, that's okay. There are a lot of us out there who feel the same way, dear ones. So thank you so much for reaching out and asking this big mouth her advice you know, about how to handle Mother's Day. You're not alone. Um, I suggest that instead of um, thinking about people who are spending time with their mothers on Mother's Day, I suggest that you make it a great day for you. Take, buy yourself flowers, buy yourself a nice card, go get a facial yourself, go out for a nice hike, take yourself out to dinner, do something really awesome for you, for you, or have a great Mother's Day with you and your children. Or you know what? Maybe there's a mother out there that you actually wish was your mom. Go visit her in a nursing home or, you know, go take a neighbor out. You know, there's, if there's a mother energy out there that you love and you appreciate, reach out. She'll love you for it and she'll appreciate it. Namaste, everybody. I bow to the love and light that is absolutely within you. Oh, and a reminder, May 25th, I will be having a free live webinar um, introducing my 12-week breakthrough coaching program. We, we launched June 1st. You can register at www.lisaaromano.com. I will add the link to the webinar below. Namaste, everybody. About to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. Bye for now.